Today, we are talking about vaccines. We are going to explain how they work. We're going to be talking a lot about the COVID-19 vaccine, where it's at. And most importantly, we're going to talk about when we can expect to have one to inject into our arms. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, it's Mitch. And it's Grr. And welcome back to Side Note. Um, we are actually... This is crazy. We're using some new equipment. That was a live sound effect that I was controlling on this little new unit. So all the sound effects you're going to hear today are me just pushing buttons and going live instead of having to edit it later. And we're even <laughs> filming it to put up on YouTube, the place we make our money from. We'll wow. see. This is a test. So we have set up this little podcast, little studio in our home uh, with this road equipment that we have been meaning to set up and are excited to test out. Road Thank spelled, you, Road spelled R-O-D-E, not R-O-A-T, not like the road you drive on. <laughs> so I have this little device. It's the first time I'm using it. I'm excited. It's fun to play with new equipment. And so, so hopefully it sounds good. <laughs> the equipment looks like, I don't know if you can come with me on this journey right now, but it looks like the thing that Kanye West would perform with in the My, My Dark Twisted Fantasy Nightmare era, where it was like, what would it sound? It would be like, oh, it's like, um, what do you got you? What do you got you? Yeah, what do you got you? What do you got you? <laughs> or um, Lady Gaga at the Brit Awards when she did the Alexander McQueen at thing. The like, Brit like, Awards. Like, like, free, 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 <laughs> I'm bitch, a bitch, 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 okay. bitch, bitch. That's um, a deep cut on Lady Gaga fandom. Or like Grimes And buttons. if that's not your favorite performance by her, you aren't a true fan. <laughs> it's those things that like DJs use where you're like, what you're doing is so easy because they go like, come on, guys. And then they literally press Push a button, button that plays and a song. A song. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, in my head, I'm like, is that serious what they're doing? And now I realize it is. Uh, well, we're here. We're fully locked up in self-isolation. We've been for 10 days. Now, 11. 11. Yeah. You've been counting. Yeah. Of course. You haven't been? I kind of lost track. I'm just kind of <laughs> living in it. It's March 24th. So that's where we're at with the information about uh, COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2. So that's where this information is going to be coming from. But how are you feeling locked in our home? Um, I don't mean this to come off the wrong way, but I think I'm handling it better than you. <laughs> oh, wait, okay. I actually want to know <laughs> exactly why you think that. Oh, well, okay. I think naturally I'm more of an introvert and more of a homebody. And I can tell in your body sometimes that you are like pent up up energy and the other day you were like i just got like what just dance and then you were downstairs in the basement yeah. like sweating i could hear you dancing so hard i heard you being like <sighs> like maybe you were working out and i was like okay <laughs> he's starting to go crazy well i mean i definitely like okay fine i definitely have been like jumping on the bed like a child and, yeah like, and weirdly usually you go to bed at, like really early and you're so you have so much energy at night yeah, I can't fall asleep. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking about the demise of, I don't know, the economy, democracy, the end of the world. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't want to instill panic, although we'll talk later about some aspects of panic. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I definitely have a lot of energy. And in, in, you're right. In an average day, I'd say I'm outside more. I'm doing more than you are. So yeah. that energy has to go somewhere. And now it goes into me screaming into a pillow for like 30 seconds. And I can see that in other people online. There's like the two factions of people who are like, this is my normal life. It's not that different. Especially if you work at home in the first place. I can and tell then like, other it, people that are like, wow, how much longer does this have to go on? Yeah, I can tell that I'm obviously like annoying when even my dog, who is a golden retriever, seems annoyed <laughs> by my energy. Like I'm like, okay, I'm actually like more annoying than a golden retriever puppy. Okay, wow. Um, but I do suffer from um, FOMO and I find that it has helped me a lot with my FOMO because now if I ever see that friends are hanging out without me uh, like online for example it means that they might die oh my god you know what I mean so I'm just like that's actually been really nice like I, right. I feel like I've been you more don't relaxed about FOMO. yeah it's like this is what we're all doing and if you're not you're actually life's at risk and I don't want to be there anyway <laughs> yeah exactly so it's like I don't have to worry about that and so I've never really had the like you know ticket here you go Greg to just stay at home and do nothing so. fair enough okay well we're going to talk a lot more about vaccines and what's going on but first we will jump into what we learned this week hit the, let's hit the sound hit effect the oh what did we learn this week <gasps> all right wow mitch like it turns me on <laughs> you're, you're pressing I'm a DJ. my buttons uh, what <laughs> did you learn this week greg okay so my uh what did we learn this week is about vaccines oh nice Related. um so yeah we still are receiving the magazine nature into our little mailbox and i wash it front and back so all the pages are like wet and like <laughs> does that not destroy it <laughs> it does like destroy it a little bit <laughs> but, um yeah You're just so, <laughs> running it under the tap like with soap and water I literally <laughs> But I don't, I'm like, I don't need the cover, and it's mostly ads for, like, pharmaceutical drugs on the first three pages. Sorry, Nature, <laughs> but you got to make your money somehow. So 
what where they're at with studying on animals, uh, I realize is that a lot of these studies talk about injecting vaccines when you're testing for them into ferrets. And actually, in our video, we talk about how a really prominent and exciting SARS vaccine, this is from 2003, not the most recent SARS-CoV-2, the one we're talking about, uh, SARS vaccine, when they injected it into ferrets and gave them the disease, they, it actually made the disease worse. And I was like, mm -hmm. ferrets, weird. Like you usually hear about mice or mm -hmm. monkeys. And it's because ferrets as animals have the most similar lungs physiologically to humans. What? Yeah. So when they study that, I did not know lungs, that. I know. So I, I, I didn't know that either, even though we talked so much and so many of the studies I was reading about were about ferrets, ferrets. I didn't know why, I mean, but it explained in this recent article. And then also reading the full study, I found that uh, rhesus macaque monkeys can get COVID-19 and they can be infected with the virus, but they don't show symptoms uh, in the same way we do. They don't show the same sort of like severity of symptoms leading up to pneumonia, they just end up with pneumonia. So rhesus macaque monkeys do get pneumonia when given the virus. So that's, okay. that's, but that's, there's no like warning. Ahead of no time. warning. There's like no, whereas coughing, most people have no... shown headaches and low lethargy. Fever. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, but they can still get it. That's still good. That's promising that we can use the vaccines on them. And then mm. mice can't get it, but they can genetically modify the mice using a protein called ACE to then inject the mice with uh, the virus. And the mice will get pneumonia. So we can now test on mice. So these are the animals, uh, ferrets, mice, and rhesus macaque monkeys that we are starting to actually test uh, on test on inject and learn about these vaccines that's really fascinating i honestly i did not know that i think i've heard often that pig bones are the most similar to human i don't know if that's true but i have heard that and i think it's from like because people also like find pig bones and then they're sometimes not sure if it's human bones but uh i think that's like a csi kind of thing or they use it for like to i don't know why are you looking like that oh i was like i'm literally <laughs> looking on the barrel of the camera because there's a camera here and i'm a youtuber and i'm just like so like and subscribe and we'll see you next week for a new video <laughs> um i actually, i don't know I about should fact Sorry, check I, that, okay? I, should, I was hoping yeah. you'd fact check no me. i don't um, know the answer that's also why. either way it's interesting that different animals would have different attributes to best model after humans that's really fascinating um, so this week I learned something unrelated to vaccines, uh, and it has to do with music and it has to do with listening and watching live performances of music. So we know often, and you probably have experienced this physically, that if you're listening to a live performance, say you're at the symphony or even just watching a band, you might move your body, you might tap your foot, you might get physically into it. And those or cry or cry. Uh, but those types of physical behaviors start to sync up between both, um, people who are performing and people in the audience, not like exactly sync up, but you know, you tend to like sway the same way, hit the beat. And so they've just done some research on the neurology of that. And they find that people's brains are actually firing in the same way as the musicians, huh. uh, which doesn't seem so shocking, but it was just a really cool study. They basically had the music in this case, it was a violinist and the violinist played a handful of songs and recorded it while their brains were being also recorded. What kind of violin? Like, are we talking like like uh, Irish, like <laughs> or is it like? Uh, I love how you're playing a violin like it's a guitar down here. <laughs> no, it was up here. Have you ever heard of Ashley McIsaac? My then friend. Why was the bow in front of your belly button? Uh, because um, I, was, I don't know which kind of violin it was, but um, like it wasn't like a rocker. No, I assumed it was like maybe classical Murphy's. music or just. Either way, they were given the instructions not to show much facial expressions so that the viewer wouldn't know if they were really enjoying a part or not. And so what they found was that regardless of the physical cues, the violinists themselves would be anticipating and get exciting at certain areas of the song. And as a result, their brains would light up. And that same thing would happen in the listeners as well. Even when the violinist was trying their best to not sort of emote. Yeah. So it was all about... Huh the experience of the music together being really similar. Well, that's also probably, and we've done a video on, at this point in our life, it's like we've done a video on this, <laughs> doing this for eight years, my friends. Um, when we did our video about pop music and how it works on your mm -hmm. brain, it's all about patterns that your brain picks up on. And then when those patterns shift or you predict the pattern, that's when you get that release of dopamine. So I guess regardless of if the violinist decided to change their body, your body, both your bodies are picking up on the patterns and picking up on the shifts. And that's why music is so like amazing. Powerful. Yeah. I think I was thinking how interesting and cool it is to be the musician who is in your own way, controlling the brains of other people, not controlling, but going on this journey, like 
you know, you, you picture music building to a climax, to the drop or whatever it is in whatever genre you're Whoa, listening Avicii to. Whoa, Avicii just <laughs> popped up, just rolled in his grave. Remember that was so popular, like the drop. There were so many. I like, think it's still. still but like not in the same way, I don't think. Uh, but I think that's so interesting that as a musician, you're feeling that ac- anticipation and excitement and you're sort of giving it to it's other people. It's why I think also we all, many of us really idolize that feeling that idea like we glorify it like imagine what it must feel like it's kind of religious in many ways like ariana grande is like the most famous pastor of our time and like (laughs) or pastor i don't even know how to say it pasteurized (laughs) milk (laughs) pastor in the sense that like you're like you know what i mean if they're able to control like twenty five thousand people's emotional Mm -hmm. feeling in one moment that's pretty powerful Mm -hmm. and amazing and so yeah i don't know you're the musician who i I'm just like, I want you to play live music because you could actually do that. You have the skill to do that. I mean, I, I, I don't not want to play live music. I just feel like I don't have the time. <laughs> like I, yeah, I, by the end of the day, I'm exhausted. And now I'm in isolation, so I can't play live music. That's a sad I thing. Live that, stream. That's something we humans have lost in all of this it's, is the, yeah. um, like joy of concerts. <laughs> yes. But I mean, I love, I personally love concerts. I love when the spring and summer comes around and I start figuring out which concerts I'm going to go to because it does provide in my life like a euphoric experience outside of drugs and alcohol, although both are usually involved. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's something that the world I think is missing right now. You you probably care less because you actually don't like going to live. Well, concerts for me are very claustrophobic and very hot and sweaty. And so I enjoy it if it's like, a seated concert because then I find I get my personal space. I don't have to worry about crowding and pushing to the front. So I enjoy live music in the right setting. I yeah. Think. Mitchell be like, Oh, is it seated? And when I say no, he'll be like, well, I'm not going. <laughs> but then it, whereas I like to be like sweaty and I like when the, when the, when the strobe lights hitting my face and I'm just like rubbing up against people and like ripping my shirt <laughs> That's off. That's actually my worst nightmare. We I went used to, to be K- ups- Oh yeah. I was gonna say we went to Kim Petras and I, I really loved it, but everyone we were with, I stood at the back and was like, you And I had to go. run between my friends and Mitch. I'd go back and forth. And back he was and like, forth. they think they're wondering if everything's okay. And I was like, I'm fine. I'm having a lot of fun. I just, I'm having more fun back here than I would be if I was smushed up and everyone. Whereas I want to, I literally like freaking used to love to crowd surf. <laughs> Isn't oh, that crazy? I used to, I honestly, so I was like really into like Taker Max on that <laughs> emo music and moshing yeah. with the Luxus on fire. Oh um, my gosh. And I used to full on like mosh pit, like push, like, like real, See, like start that them. Is violence. And I do not approve of that. Even- <laughs> no, it's consensual violence. Cause you okay. join in and then everyone's just like, we got to get at our teen angst. <laughs> and I used to, I would, I would be like, lift me up bro to someone. I would, I would crowd surf to the front, get down, run back to my friends, be like, lift me up, bro. Crowd surf to the front. Like I would crowd surf. Like, this is like, like when I met you, <laughs> how did we end up together? I don't know. I remember like my friend has a memory where like we lost each other at a concert. It was, we were like moshing so freaking hard <laughs> and we couldn't find each other. And then I had this moment where I was crowd surfing and then I like saw him and he was like, Greg. And I was like, Brian, <laughs> I was, like, oh, on, literally being God. lifted to the front. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Okay. Anyways. Before we get to off topic, we <laughs> are going to jump into some studies about vaccines and talk broadly about it. So why don't we just go there? I'll hit this button again. Study time. Study time. Study time. Study time. Okay. That beautiful so, harmony, that voice, that's you, man. I love vocal harmony. Not just like I enjoy doing it, but I uh, really appreciate artists who love to layer their vocals and just find some interesting ways. If you've never heard of Jacob Collier, one of my favorite artists. Uh, he does such a good job. Some of his songs are just only voices, and it's amazing. Whereas um, I'm more avant garde. I actually like. I'm pretty of, like, sure more, that's avant garde. Uh, the Bjork <laughs> style, where like the harmonies are actually just like wrong. Like I like when it's just sort of like ha. <laughs> because I don't know. I just sort of like to go against the grain. Mm, okay, we're gonna <laughs> today. We are actually talking about vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> so. We typically, you know, split this up into two studies, but I think today we're going to ca- kind of talk broadly in about a handful of studies. The companies that are working on vaccines, our video covers some of this, and we thought it'd be interesting to go over even how vaccines work in the first place. Because I noticed on our video, there were a lot of really positive comments that were just saying things like, this is has been so helpful. I don't know why I never really quite grasped what was happening, but it's made me feel a lot more confident and comfortable yeah. uh, getting vaccines and feeling like it just shows I- the power of learning so (laughs) i think that we are all starting to try and figure out how this pandemic is going to shift 
the world. And one positive thing I think that's going to happen is it's going to absolutely abolish the vaccine hesitancy and anti-vax movement. Because here we are at a time where everyone is just desperate for a vaccine. Imagine existing within those communities right now. You would be you should always have been ashamed, but you would be ashamed. And I uh, think one thing, oh yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. One thing I think that this video did and the comments that I've really like resonated with is that we've actually made videos about the anti-vax movement really pointed and trying to explain why there's so much hypocrisy and why it's so dangerous. But I actually think this video did a lot more for educating people and actually shifting the needle on that than we realized because a lot of people's responses were like, I never got the flu vaccine, but now watching your video, realizing how much like rigorous research goes into these vaccines, how lucky we are to be and alive at a time. amazing your body's immune system yes, is to like, learn. Exactly. So I was, I really do think that what we're talking about today and where the COVID-19 vaccine ends up is going to sh change the world. And I think we will not have to deal with that completely idiotic stance that comes from a lot of people I not mean, founded in science definitely still saw some of that so that would be my caveat to that statement i saw some amazing responses from people who oh, felt on our empowered. video there are still comments that think that vaccines are a form of mind control they think that Ugh, vaccines are that's this, just yeah YouTube. this is whole this is youtube conspiracy <laughs> people being like oh this has been they they planted this virus so they could force us all to do vaccines either so they could make money or so that they control our brains but i was like sometimes i understand in america why it's different because you i presumably have to pay for vaccines that you get there like the flu shot i assume you have to go in and pay for it in canada you just go so it's the government that's expensing it basically the government has to pay for that so it's like if the this is if this was on purpose, like the government's just losing so okay, much money from we this. We can't We're even not, go okay. down that. That is insane. Right. Let's but talk I, about but, how. But first. I love how I was trying to be like, and this is why these comments blew. And that's no, like, of no. course, there's there was some both. That make there you was both. Bark. Um, but why don't we talk a little bit first about how just an overview of how vaccines work? Vaccines can be either viruses or bacteria. It's just pathogens. We're kind of focusing on viruses because of the coronavirus. Um, but you have the two main versions being live, and then you have like dead ones. Even the the third kind I was going to say was subunit vaccines. Um, and this is just taking a piece, maybe like one spike from the virus or something that your so body recognizes as foreign gathers the immune system around and then starts replicating all these different types of immune cells, some of which are memory cells. So even when it's been dealt with and some parts of your immune system back down, you have memory cells that know how to respond as fast as possible, know the best way to destroy this particle or this virus. And I just think that's so cool to think that your body builds memory cells to deal with it in the future, which is what ties into how vaccines work because they're prepping your body basically for the real thing they it's honestly amazing doing this research for this video made me so proud of my dang legs and arms and torso <laughs> and body like i've been having baths recently and just literally breathing the oxygen in looking at my legs and being like you freaking vessel you are so amazing because like right now <laughs> just looking at my legs but like actually like right now all we can do is mitigate this disease and virus while our bodies brilliantly using our T cells and B cells and macrophages, these tiny little cells that you all have within you, go out, hunt down the virus, do their best to save you. That is all we have is the physiology and this like complex nuanced form of evolution where they literally like read the virus mm -hmm. and then start to figure out how to proliferate and build this immunity. And I yeah. think it's just vaccines are so freaking brilliant. They're beautiful, beautiful, amazing things that humans were able to think of, which is like unfathomable to me that people even were able to think that this about this immune system, this detailed, but they are brilliant pieces of like human um, technology, like medicine that we are so and fortunate actually, to live and have. It's been around for a while, the idea of inoculating people. In the video, we talked about um, the first vaccine sort of being in, I think, the 1700s. I'm forgetting right now. But even before that, different societies, including like sort of ancient societies, were using the technology not technologies but they were inoculating people with no understanding that if you expose someone in certain ways they build immunity maybe not understanding the intricacies of it intricacies of it but humankind has been 
following these steps for a while before the first official vaccine was ever created. And I yeah, yeah. Before they were like they were seeing the results of giving someone a disease and then them not getting it again before they were realizing like what the immune system was doing. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'd like evolved it so before we understood it. This all ties into the current vaccine. So there's a, now another type of vaccine. There's a few others. I, I just want to reiterate the subunit versus the sure. live, like because we talked about uh, okay. live attenuated vaccines where you actually like get the virus and the dead virus, but subunit vaccines. Uh, which is like the flu vaccine, are just pieces of the virus, literally just the proteins that are from the surface of it. I think that's important for people to know because it's like, I, you know, people get scared. They're like, I'm putting the virus in me. I'm putting the dead virus in me. Mm-hmm. But there's also some where it's not even that. It's just like literally the proteins and the part that your body need to read to learn about to then make build more white blood cells and T cells around that. Mm-hmm. Like there's a way of doing it without even giving people the vaccine, which leads to this yeah, because many it. people can't get the live attenuated vaccines anyway. Like people who have compromised immune systems and often children, they don't have the immune system yet. So there are, are certain other kinds of vaccines which sometimes aren't as powerful and have to be given booster shots because yeah, that's how to I get like regular to get, to get your booster regular immunity. But okay, going into sort of the more new and experimental types, one is called DNA vaccines, and it also ties into something called mRNA vaccines, which we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so the mRNA vaccine that you may have heard of in regards to SARS-CoV-2, which is the name of the virus. And COVID-19, which is the name of the disease that you get from the virus. Uh, and is, coronavirus being a type of virus. Yes, coronavirus is an umbrella term. So there are many coronaviruses. SARS, the virus that we talked about in 2003 that like took over Hong Kong and parts of Toronto, that was a coronavirus. Mm-hmm. So if you hear someone say coronavirus right now, they're probably talking about the one we are all right. talking SARS, about. CO2. But it is an umbrella term. But the mRNA vaccine is the one you may have heard about because they've already started human trials, which is... Crazy a little bit. Yeah. Well, never I, happened before. Yeah, obviously. I mean, it's under special circumstances. Um, they are. So it's a company called Moderna, right? Is that the name of the yeah, company? Yeah, it's a private company. There are, I think, about 100 labs around the world right now working on all sorts of, whether it be vaccines, therapeutics, like to deal with being sick versus preventative. Um, and so Moderna it has already produced a vaccine that they're now testing. They are doing their animal testing concurrently. Yes, but at the they, same time. Usually you have around two years of animal testing before you jump into human trials. But because of the nature of the situation, because of the nature of the technology, which I'll kind of briefly explain now, um, they've been given the go-ahead by the government to start human trials. Use those words coming from your lips, Mitch, and explain it to the, to the people <laughs> okay. listening out yes, there. Yes, ma'am. Um, so basically, M- mRNA vaccines, as far as I understand like the broad details, it's... So, you know, before we talked about putting a virus into your body to trigger your immune system, in this case, they're putting a sequence of code into your cells. mRNA stands for messenger RNA. And we can't get so detailed on this right now because, again, we're just using words and I'm a diagram kind of guy. (laughs) Uh, But mRNA, uh, yeah, it's essentially coded when you think about your DNA code. RNA Mm -hmm. has their own version. And so it's a code. When we say code, we mean that code. We don't mean like Like your DNA. like typing like tickety tackety I'm coding a new website. <laughs> so your these strands of information basically go into your cells and the hope is that your cells read them and produce proteins. So the spikes we talked about earlier. Exactly. Spike proteins. So your cells start making these proteins. They use the mRNA, they read it, they build. So that's what your cells would normally do even with your own DNA. They would take it, read it, build proteins that your cell needs. In this case, the mRNA has them basically building the virus spikes. And as a result, that is still going to trigger your immune response. And so your cells make the spikes and then suddenly your immune immune response reacts. But luckily there is actually no danger because those proteins have been made, but there's nothing attached. Yeah, there's no virus being uh, given in. And so for that reason, they have jumped to human trials in order to test, uh, to start the safety of it. So we just making sure that these humans don't get more sick when they uh, contract the virus, don't get more sick. Uh, just in general from having this being injected into them. And so that's where they're starting right now. They're going to be doing 45 individuals over the next two weeks, essentially, because they did it about two weeks ago. So it's fascinating. This is a a fascinating example of like the times we are living in where we are like, like speeding through science. And honestly, like, 
I think it is important that we know the importance of this spiky, spiky little virus. <laughs> Miss Rona, as us queers call it, is spiky. And it those spiky, spiky, spiky proteins are very important because that's the thing that your body goes, oh, what are these spiky spikies? They're not supposed to be here. And then they try and fight it off. So those spiky spikies are what we're trying <laughs> to get our bodies to learn how to predict will come. And when we get a vaccine and we inject it into us, we're going to be injecting the spiky spikies. Okay. How many times are we going to say spiky spiky in this podcast? I think it's so important that people understand the spiky spikies. Sure. Because you see the spiky um, spikies when you see the coronavirus being shown to you on popular memes. So spiky spikies. That's true. I was, gonna, I was gonna emphasize too that just because it's not a, an actual virus going into your body doesn't mean that it can't have some adverse reactions or yes. effects, which is why they have to take it so slow. Typically, vaccines take like a decade or decades to make and be approved because you have to go through so many stages of making sure that not only will this vi oh, sorry, not only will this vaccine not cause, say, illness or other issues in a person long term, but that it also doesn't inflame the issue more when you actually catch the virus. So they can't just go, boop, okay, took a week and you're fine. They now need to wait until you contract the virus and they can't ethically just give you the virus. So they basically have to wait, put you back in the population, compare you to control groups who weren't given the vaccine, and then see, okay, did it help you? Did you not get the virus? If you got the virus, did you get the symptoms? Were your symptoms worse? Like there's still all these variables that can't be certain. And that's why vaccines take so long to be approved because it's a pretty big deal to stick something in your body like that and hope that it works if it hasn't been rigorously tested. Yeah. So let's take a bit of a break and then we're going to come back and talk about how vaccines are usually made for people to actually use and how long we think this one is going to take. So in order to do this, you're going to press, <laughs> what am I going to press? You're going to press. I don't know how to take no, a break. Oh my God. Press the, the little like, -de 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 -de. okay, this is going to be our break. <laughs> <laughs> and we're ah, back. <laughs> well, wow that was a, i don't know about you but that that was a break it was a break <laughs> and just so everyone watching and listening knows usually we actually stop and take a break well you know what it's because i was thinking we should do a comment corner so i'm oh. gonna open one okay open a comment and then corner you are gonna, i have that jingle you're gonna, here you're gonna uh, lady gaga <laughs> free 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 bitch bitch bitch, um, bitch 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 you let me know when you're ready uh and so i'm just gonna do a little actually <laughs> I'm going to do a little ad. Okay, so make sure that you are uh, giving us five stars on Apple uh, iTunes because it really helps the algorithm. And mm -hmm. that is uh, what we call when Al Gore dances, his algorithm. Yeah, we might as well take this moment just to say, and we've said it before, it, we, it means so much to us when you, especially on your podcast apps and iTunes, rate it, leave us a review. It helps the show. If you're watching on YouTube that you like it and share it or whatnot, uh, we appreciate your support so much. Okay. Are you ready? I, okay, I got I have, one. I, I've okay. got a jingle for you, Greg. Comment corner. Okay, a single tear just went down my cheek. That was <laughs> beautiful. So this is from Groovy Diamond. Uh, their main comment was, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, five stars. Oh, my God. Sorry. It's just like not to toot our own horn, but five stars. Five out of five. Five out of five stars. Yeah, that's 100%. As a fellow LGBTQ family member, Queen, go off. I love how open you guys are to just about anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think that is probably about like how I fart on. <laughs> I'm a 13 year old living in the capital of Canada and loving science. Love you guys. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so 13 years old. I'm so sorry that we swear often, uh, but just I'm pretty sure at this point with the internet, you've all heard it. And thanks for listening at 13 years old. That's so awesome. Uh, because you're learning science. Oh, I see. Now we have to keep going. Okay. We're going to go back. Thanks, Groovy Diamond. Oh, wow. Honestly. Wow. That was like a, a trip. Like a, like a subtle It's actually really rub. nice. It's so nice. <laughs> okay. So back to vaccines. <laughs> okay. So essentially to make a vaccine... Let's not talk about coronavirus right now. Let's talk about a vaccine that you will all have hopefully received at a young age. Maybe it's polio vaccine. Maybe it's smallpox vaccine. How they do those is that you start by actually sequencing the virus. Then you actually have to generate the virus. And then you have to test it in animals. And as we talked about earlier, that's usually mice working your way up to a uh, monkeys similar to humans and that's when you then start human trials which is what they've already done uh, in seattle with moderna mm -hmm. and those are small populations of people where you 
give them the vaccine. And again, you wait, you wait to see and make sure that it's safe, make sure that things aren't getting worse. Then you move on to a second phase where you then test it on thousands of people, again, in a similar population where the disease is likely occurring and you wait and you give it to some people, you don't give it to others. And then you even like pretend to give it to them, but you don't actually give it to them, placebo. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. And then at that point, you then move on to a third phase where you do it to even more people before eventually going for a license, before you actually then have to get all these approvals before anyone ever receives the vaccine. And this takes years, years and years before a vaccine will ever be given to you, unless it's something like a flu vaccine where the actual ways that they make it, they've done it so often and over and over that it's just about them every year tweaking it a little bit so we know how safe it is, we know how rigorously tested it is, and just every year they add in the new type of flu viruses that they predict are going to be going around the population that year. So this is to say that these things take time. And even this Moderna vaccine, which they have already started human trials of, the earliest that they ever think that they could start giving it to the general population would be one year. So do not expect... And that's sort of in the perfect scenario, right? In that that's, everything that's it goes works. right. That's nothing yeah. goes wrong. That's it. That's a, you know, there's also a chance it does nothing. Like that maybe it doesn't, doesn't make work. things worse, but yeah. it might just not even do anything. So yeah, that's, that's in the And they have to world. know all that before they can scale up because then the last part is how do you give it to the world's population, right? So there's this whole endeavor of first we have to make sure it works if you can't start spending so much money on developing a vaccine if we don't understand the long-term implications and it's kind of uh something we didn't talk about in our video but that's what this podcast is about because it's very contentious this these vaccines are being studied around the world in china in america in canada we have people doing it in dalhousie at u of t and it's because if one of these people figure out uh the vaccine that works and let's say it's a year and a half from now and it Again, that is the timeline. Early estimates are about a year. Conservative ones are like two years. If And it's a year from now and they figured it out. They're going to build up and manufacture this to inoculate their own citizens first. Mm. So say China uh, gets a vaccine first. They're obviously going to be giving it to their own citizens first. So that is why it is really important that a lot of people do this. But why we also have to remember that getting a vaccine, everyone in the world is going to want it. And that is going to be a time for really important ideas of coming together, of patience, of, you know, worldwide efforts to make sure that it doesn't create a negative, dangerous place where people are, I don't know, economically are paying for it. Like the richest countries get it first. Like how is this all going to work? That is something that we have to think about right now because that's going to be happening in the future. But if Canada comes up with their vaccine first, that's the most likely one to be used. Obviously, they're going to inoculate their country first. So that's just something that's worth thinking about. Yeah, it'll be, I mean, it's a long ways away. So we maybe, it'll be, I'm just so interested to see where things go at this point. Obviously, we're going to hopefully keep working on this vaccine because this problem is big enough and could happen again in the future. Whether or not there's more outbreaks, if we contain it now, it's just so uncertain. Um, what do you think is going to happen in terms of like, where do we go right now knowing that, okay, this vaccine isn't going to come soon. That That's sort of what prompted us to want to make not only this podcast, but the episode we made in our channel, because we had heard anecdotally from like friends and family being, oh, you know, this will be in isolation. And then in a few weeks, hopefully they'll have a vaccine. So this idea that we're going to have it soon and in a couple of weeks, we can start giving it to people. We just were like, we know that's not true. Let's do the research to see what experts are saying. Knowing that, where does that leave us? I mean, it leaves in us current in current situation. In what we all need to be doing right now, which is physically distancing ourselves from people right. and living a life of social isolation in order to flatten the curve to ensure that uh, medical professionals and hospitals, which are already underfunded and do not have the ability to look after the human population if everyone were to get it around the world that would be a huge issue so that's why what we're doing right now is mitigating what's happening and buying time but it is worth having these conversations because a vaccine is not going to be what is going to fix us short term and we know that for a fact you cannot ever start thinking that you're going to get a vaccine there's no point in starting to think that you're going to get a vaccine within a year, because that's just going to be astounding if that happens. So it's better to be on the safe side mentally. And I think where we're at now and for a new video that we want to do, and hopefully maybe even next week's podcast will be about antiviral medication, because I think 
that for me is a place that could help a lot with like symptoms and treatment. And I think I'd say are, even just beyond antivirals, what other therapeutics are being created to help yes. people manage their symptoms, to help people recover faster, to help, yeah, kill, excuse me, kill the virus if, if possible. There's so many other things. So there is still like a level of hope that people should have. And scientists are putting so much time and effort into figuring this out. And governments, I think, are throwing money at it right now because but they're vaccines realizing- aren't going to be what we get within a year. And they're going to be, uh, a lot of things we have to figure out in the next year before we ever can expect to start inoculating the world population from SARS-CoV-2. But I do think another thing you shouldn't do is uh, listen to the president of the United States uh, pretty much ever because (laughs) it's so dangerous what he did just going off and talking about these like, oh my God, like talking about medication and telling people to take this medication is so dangerous. Do well, we, it. I was okay. like, yeah, I was about to pop off. <laughs> no, no, you can okay. pop off. I, I just think so. There are people who I saw defending this because they're going, well, look, there's some evidence for it. And I think what people need to realize is that much like the vaccines that get tested for extremely long periods of time, so do medicines, so do drugs. And so even if there is a, a little bit of evidence that some, it, it, Actually, also, I'd say that the evidence is murky and limited at best because it was all anecdotal coming out of China that they were just throwing at it. It was never in a controlled trial. And it was trial. in very severe situations. Yeah, and it wasn't studied. So that's the problem. They The doctors were trying to give anything to help this get better. And anecdotally, some of them thought, I think this may have helped. So the risk is that we're putting all this belief behind that when it actually hasn't been studied or proven and we don't quite know the risks. Someone died recently because they were also taking some fish supplement or something like that. I didn't, I didn't quite understand, but um, they took the president of the United States advice and took that drug and now they are dead. And so there are so many risks. What? Yeah. There it's like the first death from that drug has just happened. And then everyone who is, you know, wanting to support the president is like, yeah, but they were taking all these other meds that like conflicted with this drug. And it's like, that's why this shouldn't be prescribed from the president. You need to go to your doctor so they can evaluate your medical history and they can understand if this drug is appropriate for you because lots of drugs have negative impacts and and interact with other drugs, other sorry, interact with other drugs in negative ways that could severely damage yourself. It's it's honestly the most dangerous. It was ugh, I mean, I'm like, well, on, on a scale of the most disgusting it's, it's things. It's one of those said, things like that's frustrating because yes, maybe at some point we will realize, okay, this is one of the better treatments we can use. Maybe not though. And so it's just coming from a tweet from the president and now also from his mouth in press conferences is just irresponsible, honestly, because there's not enough behind it. And I get that some people are like, but we want to act fast, but you may cause more problems than you're going to solve. If may, you not- will. You will cause more problems. And under like starting to research antiviral medication, like the way that these medications work is they, you know, they limit your your cells' ability to create energy or to um, read RNA in order to stop the virus. But that does come at a cost to your own body. All of these drugs are used in serious situations when you have a serious virus at the cost of other parts of your physiology. So you can't just ever. If you understand the physiology of how drugs work, it's not just this magic thing that goes, oh, hey, there's the virus, boop, 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 shoot the virus, and not affect any other part of your body. That's not how toxicology, how physiology, how these things work. So, and, and it's like, Donald Trump can't read. So like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, obviously he's not coming at this from a place of understanding. So it is extremely dangerous. I'm like, we've gotten here because I think I do think antiviral medication and medication is more of a place where I'm thinking for a hope that it will be shorter term than a year to help with all of this. But in the meantime, we do know what does work and what you need to do is listen to scientists and medical professionals. And what they are saying is stay home. If you can Which... stay in your freaking house, it's not that freaking hard or apartment or wherever <sighs> you have Netflix, you have the internet, just porn hub, babe, Relax. One other thing I was going to share potentially as my what did you learn this week? I had just listened to another podcast about Hong Kong and how they have so few cases, given that they're so like right beside China. Um, 
it was interesting to see that they had such low numbers and uh, listening to this person talk who's from Hong Kong about sort of the cultural differences in terms of because Hong Kong was really hit hard by SARS. And ever since then, as a population, it, it was like they are willing to do what needs to happen. And the second that this virus started outbreaking, people were willing to socially isolate and listen to that advice. Mm. And it's been kind of ingrained in their culture to like use hand sanitizer often and wear masks on a regular basis. So um, what worries me is yeah. the cultural difference of our societies having never dealt with this. Yeah. Like maybe this will change after, but if we it don't, yeah. if we don't listen to this advice, we're going to see. And that okay, I'm not gonna try and go on too much of a tangent here, but it leads to another conversation that's been disturbing to me that I've seen start to grow out of this, which is, oh, why don't we just let? It's just old people. Let's just let them die. Like what? it's not. Yeah, the new Who sort of that? the new talking points right now is let's not destroy the economy. Donald Trump's line right now is the cure can't be worse than the disease. So they're thinking that because the cure is to destroy the economy, we'd rather kill everyone who would die because it's just old people. And so I think that's like really <sighs> messed up. And I actually saw something that uh, Diana from Physics Girl just reshared and, and tweeted that showed the hospitalization rates of different age groups. And be for people, uh, I don't know the exact age range. I think it was between 20 and 35 something in that bubble was still 20% of people that age get hospitalized. And that's like, so it's not just cause you're not dying. And if the hospital systems get overwhelmed, yeah, what happens when you, you when can't you be fall and you like break your leg, like it's like, then the hospital is still that you would go to, to would you, be still yeah. like, un Oh my God, that's insane. So I'm it's so just, scared it's just a really sad over. thing. And it's really frustrating because a lot of, places obviously somewhere like new york i think is now taking it so seriously but why does it have to get to that point and are other cities including canada and toronto looking and going we don't want to get there we really need to self-isolate the honest truth is in a perfect world if we could wave our hands and all isolate for weeks we could deal with this but obviously there's so many issues associated with like you need to go get food you need to whether it's groceries and we're having there's nurses and doctors that have to keep working um but without the the coherence of the society to listen to these rules, it's, is it enough? If only 50% of people self-isolate, is it really doing anything at all but half destroying the economy and then not even solving the problem? Oh, God. Oh, God. See, this is the things that make me not able to sleep. <laughs> this is what I think about. But I, yeah, like I do think Hong Kong is a great example. We did the uh, studies last week looking at what their impact of self-isolation. So they all knew. They all have self-isolated before, well, in 2003. So if they were alive during that time, they've all self-isolated. They've gone through what we're all going through right now. So it makes sense. If this ever were to happen again, we would start self-isolating a lot e easily. But we need well, to learn. Well, maybe not yet. I think if, we, we as would, the though. death toll gets higher. And it's interesting to no, remember. But, no, I'm trying to say that if this were to happen again, say in 10 years. After where, and if, if it stopped today right now. Yeah, we would still know. I don't oh, think people would. Wait, wait. Okay, then we disagree because I still think the idea of self-isolation has now become something we are all living with. We didn't know about this before. Sure. If there was a pandemic that broke out in the same way in five years, we would all, A, the governments would tell it more easily. We'd go, oh, hey, guys, we know this again. Get Stay at home. It's your Netflix. We would. We have already learned a lot. People's lives have changed. I don't think we need to be so... Just because some people are haven't maybe clicked to the same extent that you and I both have doesn't mean that we haven't already all learned something from this. Oh, I agree with that. I just mean I think a lot of people, even if even some people who are self-isolating aren't taking it so seriously and haven't seen it directly impact them yet that if 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 this debacle were to end today and everything be solved and we have the death toll we have, I think that it won't wouldn't trigger our society at large enough to immediately understand it's worth shutting down the economy. I think so many people are worried about money right now, yeah. but if they can see where this goes and it's true. Okay. Yes. Mostly people who are dying are, you know, above 70, but that doesn't mean there aren't scenarios where young people have severe complications. There are lots of young people who have already pre-existing conditions and they're not the only ones who are ending up hospitalized. And I don't want to scare people. Like we, if you're young, you most likely will be healthy even if you get it. So I don't, don't want people to feel like I'm trying to fear monger or anything like that. And you may get it and you may not have any symptoms, but I just think we need to have a little more compassion for everyone else who you don't know who the people are. We know a lot of old people are going to be impacted, but you don't know which one of your friends or yourself or your family members 
might or immune seem like people. yeah, or might seem like somebody who you know is healthy, is great, is young, and might have a complication. And is it worth that risk? Because the economy is losing money, like you're willing to risk your friends' lives and your own life. I don't know. Obviously, I understand there's a bigger conversation of how we manage the economy, how we get through this in a way that doesn't stop food from getting to our grocery stores so we can actually eat and things like that. But it just feels so uncertain to me right now. And yeah, I mean. Well, I'm just going to do my usual thing before we wrap up, which is just my socialist instincts are going to pop off, which is that. Amazon didn't pay federal tax last year. 60 of the biggest corporations in America didn't pay federal tax last year. It's mm-hmm. like, this is why you need to tax corporations when our economies are thriving and booming because they're making billions of dollars of profits. And that needs to go back into the government and the government needs to then use those that money in times like now in order to... Di- Give the money out to the people who need it, the workers on whose backs you are making these corporations in order to create a society that is more just. And I think and I hope and I freaking pray this atheist is praying that like <laughs> we will learn from this in order to do this better in the future, in order to look after citizens right now. I mean, it is kind of interesting. Who are the people who can stay home? It's like, is your job? <laughs> no, I don't need to go down the job. But, but I'm like, the people who are no, still having to I go think, to work are the people who I are think underpaid yeah. and who are so freaking important because society, the people who we need for society to keep going at a time like this are interestingly the people who are not paid that much. Mm-hmm. But know who's sitting at home? A lot of these rich. Okay, well, I, I do need to like stop. <laughs> I mean, I feel I mean we're like sitting at home. Off. Exactly. We are a perfect this, example. I think you need to, yeah, make it a little more personal to feel not Okay, attacking. so and I'll talk about us. We live in Canada where we are taxed as much higher than you are in America. And I will tell you this, as people who make way more money than I ever expected to as someone who just planned to be a high school teacher, it is so important that we are taxed because you cannot expect these rich people to just give money. For example, I give to charity. I do my personal part. But for example, when I sponsored a Syrian newcomer to come to Canada, it was the work that was the big issue. I was going with him trying to figure out all the like driver's license and healthcare. It's like, oh my God, the issue was the work and the time. And that is also, say a really philanthropic rich person has really good intentions, but they don't have time. They're rich and they have you know, they, they're running their companies. They don't have time to think about charity. So they need to be taxed and that money needs to be figured out how to be funneled into housing and into other places because that's what they do. They take the money from them and the government figures out what to do with it. And you can complain all day about what the government is like wasting all this money, but I'm sorry, we pay a lot of tax, for example, on our home and we get the receipt. We pay a lot of taxes. We paid a lot of money for our house and we see where that money goes to. And it goes to affordable housing in the area. It goes to parks. It goes to all of these things that every everyone else can enjoy in order to create a more just society. You need to tax corporations and you need to tax rich people. And if you are against that, you need to think about why the heck you are. Greg, uh, I also meant a personal example of being self-deprecating, which oh. meant like you were like all those <laughs> shitty people with jobs who get to work from home. I was like, okay, let's talk about ourselves. We get to work from home. But I'm saying I'm happy that I get taxed a lot. Yes, you no, that's I mean? true. Yeah. I ultimately wanted Sorry. to make the point of we should be so appreciative and not forget this when it's over of nurses and doctors and scientists and grocery clerk workers and people who are having to work now to keep society functioning at all and putting their lives at risk who not only can they not work from home we actually are demanding that they continue to work otherwise our society will fall apart and in that case i'm i'm trying to be like yeah <laughs> we are not that role no, of course we have our role to play and hopefully science communication all our 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 friends and people online who are doing this we, I appreciate them so much for doing it, but there's another level of we're realizing who the people we need in our society are. And I hope when this whole pandemic is over, we don't forget that and that yes. we use, Teachers. build our societies around people and lift those jobs up because yes. we've certainly turned on a dime to be like, we need them now. Yeah. And it's just sad to think that maybe they'll be forgotten in that sense and that their wages no, and we are their not gonna benefits let that won't go up. Me, we, we cannot let that happen. Teachers, I also want to put in there as well, because a lot of parents right now are being like, how the hell? <laughs> and know, as someone who, like, my family is, health, like, my sister's a healthcare professional, and I want to be a teacher. Like, these are the jobs that matter. And I really, really think that that is so important that people realize that. You know what I mean? When you're at home and you're complaining about your kid's teacher or you're complaining about the wait times or the nurse, it's like, think twice. Um, Greg, I don't know if I've ever heard you get 
so heated on this podcast before. <laughs> I actually think it's the most I've ever heard you get heated. Wait, really? Yeah, you felt really passionate and upset, but that's a good thing. Okay, is um, it? Now I'm like, now I'm gonna, have, now I'm gonna go. No, you'll listen. You were fine. It. You just like were very intense. Um, okay. I just okay. want to say thank you all so much for listening. I'm trying to. Oh my gosh, I messed this up. No, it's the song's I love almost it. over. <laughs> we love you so much, and listen next week. Um, no, I just wanted oh. to say like hashtag side note podcast. If you want to talk about it, message us, leave comments on wherever YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Let us know how you're doing in self-isolation and let us know your thoughts about the vaccine. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys next week. Yeah. Was that what you said? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Thank you. Bye.